What's up you amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So a couple of days ago I released a video where I showed you guys a full bug bounty methodology that you can use. And today I want to go a little bit deeper into the cross-site scripting part of it and actually demonstrate what I mean. So let's get right into it, shall we? Now the first thing I want to show you guys is, uh, of course I made an account and I have a big tip for you guys. Start injecting cross-site scripting attack uh, vectors as soon as you can. So now that I've created my account, I'm immediately going to start injecting cross-site scripting attack vectors. I'm going to go to my account settings. This is usually where you can store a lot of values. So this is usually where I start. And I'm going to go first of all to the first menu item. Going through all of these, you have your order history, recycle bin, addresses uh, and payment options plus a wallet. Now first the order history, there's nothing I can save here. So we'll move on and on the saved addresses we have the first values that we can actually store. So for stored cross-site scripting what you'll do is you'll start with an attack vector like uh, say for example a link. This is going to be just a regular uh, HTML entity. So there we go. This will be link and then we'll end our HTML entity. And we're going to save this in as many fields as possible. So wherever possible, it won't be possible in mobile number because they put a validation on it. Uh, but in address, city and state, we can all fill in this attack vector. <coughs> now, why do I recommend this very simple HTML entity? Uh, really because uh, I always recommend starting with a very very simple attack vector and then building your way up. If anything of this catches you can start building your way up and that way if you encounter a filter you can start breaking down filters one by one. Say for example let's say you're looking for reflected cross-site scripting so we're going to go to the search page for this and here you can see that we have a reflected value. Now this reflected value, if we put our attack vector in there, it's actually going to be reflected as an HTML entity. Now we can add a JavaScript handler to that entity. And if JavaScript handlers would have been blocked and this would not fire, we would notice immediately that we were fighting a filter that's blocking these different attack vectors. Uh, sorry, these JavaScript handlers, I mean. So um, no, now we don't have an error, of course, because we haven't generated an error. But if we change this to an image and we say source equals x, uh, we have generated an error here. And as you can see, we have our pop-up. Now, this is also a strategy for reflected cross-site scripting, for stored cross-site scripting, for blind, for dumb. Start as simple as you can. And if you are encountering a filter, you'll know which one to find one by one. Now on to the next part we have for stored course scripting. We also still have the payment options and in here you guys can see that I added a card also with this attack vector. Now um, what I also want to do of course is see if I cannot get anything to catch. Let's say for example if I go back to my saved addresses, there we go. Now here you can see that I tried to just get the input field to end. So if we go and inspect the element here you guys can see that I just tried to end this input field, but it didn't work. So that's also a possibility you can try for um, for cross-site scripting. This is not going to be normal cross-site scripting. Of course, it's self cross-site scripting. But if there is no CSRF token on that form, you can chain those together and you can find a really cool vulnerability that way. Now, um, on to the next part. So let's say you have all of these values stored. You have your account set up. You want to continue testing as normally. So you just want to do whatever you would normally do on the website, add some products to the basket, go to this basket, check it out. And there we go. We already have those stored values that are being reflected back at us. Now, if we would have something catch here, we would already be able to see it because this would not be a normal uh, attack vector. This would actually be a link and it would be clickable. So then we would again move on to the next stage and try to exploit an actual cross-site scripting attack vector. Now on to continue, here we pick a delivery speed and here again we have this delivery address. Same with the cross-site scripting, testing and here we go for the payment options in the cards we can see the names again. Now that's why it's so important that you start really early in uh, putting all these attack factors in because they might be reflected on different type on different stages of the website. Here again we have the delivery address reflected completely 
and the payment method. So all of these are possibilities for cross edge scripting attacks to occur. They're not going to per se, but they are possibilities. Now when we place our order again, and here we can also see that we can generate a order confirmation and this order confirmation might also be injectable uh, depending on not or if we get a reflected value in here that we stored earlier in this case there is nothing in here that we stored earlier so we're going to have to either find a way to manipulate this or something but it's not going to be as easy for sure now on to the next part so say you have tested all of these cross-site scripting and tag factors you can also test for blind cross-site scripting now what is blind cross-site scripting real quick you have for example a customer feedback form in here and whatever we put in here so let's say we have this uh, customer feedback let's put in the correct result let's submit it there we go we have submitted something and we cannot see what actually happened so we don't have our stored value reflected here so we're going to have to work blindly and for this, for this you can use XSS Hunter. XSS Hunter has a couple of payloads for you. So the first thing you're going to have to do is sign up to the page, of course. Then you can go to XSS Hunter and let me log in for you real quick. The XSS Rat. There we go. Now uh, you can just copy and paste those payloads. Oh, sorry, I don't have the correct username, it appears. Um, I think it's case sensitive. There we go, it was case sensitive. So you get a couple of payloads in XSS Hunter. You can just copy these to the clipboard. And what I usually do is I just copy and paste as many as I can. So you have a script tag payload, a JavaScript payload, some input, some images, some video sources, some iframes. Um, a lot of these are also going to be, say for example, this one is going to be for bypassing the content security policy. So this one is also a really cool one to get. Um, you can just paste them all in here and as many, many as you can, of course, in here they won't fit a lot, so you will have to do it one by one. But this is how you can test for blind cross-site scripting as well. Now, when somebody in the backend opens this page and one of them fires, you'll see them in the XSS fires tab and also in the collected pages tab. And you'll also receive an email from XSS Hunter. Now you can use XSS Hunter as you can see in here, just go to the website or you can ho also host it yourself. Now that was a lot of ways to test for cross-site scripting and tag factors. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye everybody.